See, Elvis Presley to me, I just, it's, it's his presence, I think it is. I don't mm -hmm. think anyone in this business has had as much presence as Elvis. I don't think anyone's had as strong a presence. I think, I think there have been entertainers, I think Michael Jackson's the only entertainer who's ever been more famous than him, but I think Elvis has uh, more presence. Like when Elvis walked in the room, everybody just looked at Elvis, you know? What's up? It's Pluto. Welcome back to Classic Reactions, where we get into classic hits that I've never heard before. Yes, you guys, today is Classic Reactions Special Edition. We'll be getting into the second part of the Elvis documentary. So I think part one was really good. Not only did I get to see a different perspective of Elvis, but I gained a whole new respect because it gave me an idea of who he was outside of the music. So I really enjoyed part one of Elvis in the Black community. And so I'm excited to get into part two. You guys have been telling me, listen, Pluto, we got to watch part two of Elvis in the Black community. All right. So without further ado, let's get into it. Uh, the first time I met Elvis, I was uh, in, in Las Vegas in the 70s. I was the conductor and music director for B.B. King, the Blues Act. Uh, we were opening in the Las Vegas Hilton's main room as and the opening Margaret. act for Amy. Well, we had no idea Elvis was there, nor did she, so we were watching her act from backstage. And uh, in her act, she uh, walked around the main room in the audience, and she always stopped at this certain table. That well, morning, that was when I walked into the dining room, I spoke. I said, good morning. He said, good morning. I said, what are we going to have for breakfast this morning? He said, fried peanut butter and banana sandwich. And I s looked at him. I said, what? He said, fried peanut butter and banana sandwich. I said, I never heard of it. Now, now I am from the South, but I have never heard of fried peanut butter and banana sandwiches. Y'all let me know. Is that a thing? The first time I went in, fixed the sandwich and put it on the tray and brought it back, that wasn't right. His the father was sitting there, and he said, Mary, I'm going with you and help you. And let's see, maybe both of us can get it right. I said, okay. Then uh, he said, let's toast the bread first. So we toast the bread and then spread the peanut butter on it and sliced the bananas and put on it and uh, put them into the skillet and kept turning them with the spatula and turn them till they got heated all the way through. Then I take them and cut them, put them on the platter and take them back to me. And he said, now, that's what I want, that's right. And then smile. Life, but he'll always live because of the fact he was such a beautiful man. I don't care what nobody's saying, I know Elvis. You know, there are a lot of rumors. Elvis and I sang spiritual together. And, uh, he kept me from being number one, I was number one soul and he was number one world and it took a long time but it's almost like the two rental cars. Uh -huh. It made me try harder and I love Elvis for it and, and we'll always pray for Elvis. Do you remember that? Wow, shout out to James Brown. It's always interesting to hear another legend like himself show admiration to Elvis or any other of his peers. But as James Brown just said, Elvis made him go harder because Elvis was number one in the world on the music charts. And I think James said he was like number one in soul or blues. I, I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. So to me, that really puts in perspective how great of an artist Elvis was to influence the greats like James Brown and so many more. <sighs> wow. Let's keep going. Do you remember it wasn't actually, you don't really meet Elvis, uh -huh. you actually just look at Elvis, <laughs> okay? It's my mother sang with Elvis for years. Yeah. Uh, she and um, her, her group, they were called the Sweet. Oh, that is iconic. Whitney Houston mother song with Elvis? Let's hear more. Inspirations. Yeah. They also sang for Aretha for yeah. many, many years. On most of the, uh, in the 60s, uh -huh. they were on all of Aretha's songs. Well, um... Elvis took a liking to them, mm -hmm. and my mom sang with him for many years, and they were very close. Yeah. 
Um, I just remember at one point being in a room, and we were all in this room, my mother and the singers, and we, you know, you know, the usually backstage kind of thing. And he just walks in the room with his mink on, with his glasses on. <laughs> oh my God. And he just walks in. He says something, and everybody just—you don't say anything. You just look. <laughs> it was just one of those moments I won't forget as a kid. Oh my it wasn't God. like, "Hi, Mr. Elvis, nice to meet you." You didn't do that. You just sat back and just, just looked at him. Amazing. He was, Amazing, amazing to look at. Yeah. Just amazing. Wow. And just to be in his presence you know, was awesome. Tell me about that. Tell me, get, get. <laughs> that is crazy. Whitney Houston's mom was Elvis's backup singer? Well, first of all, I never knew Whitney Houston's mom was a singer at all. But not only was she a backup singer, she was a backup singer for Elvis in Aretha Franklin. So with that being said, I have a ton of questions. Well, first and foremost, shout out to the legend, the icon, the great Whitney Houston. You guys, when you talk about powerful voices and talent, you cannot not mention Whitney Houston. She is just legendary. She is so talented. Honestly, Whitney and Elvis had a lot in common. Both of them were amazing vocalists. Both of them were great actors. So with that being said, did Whitney Houston get a chance to learn from Elvis? Whitney just said that her mom and Elvis were close. So I wonder, did she get a chance to be like a mentee? Well, when they first called, the girl said, Elvis Presley, oh my God, what are we going to do? And I said, hey, it's a good gig and it's a good one. Uh-huh. So um, we went. And when we got there, it was nothing like what we might have thought, you know, because it was just wonderful. Well, it was really wonderful. He was into gospel. So every once in a while when we finished rehearsing with him, we just sing gospel, all of us, you know. And we just had a good time. Good money and good pay and good, it was nice atmosphere, you know. And we didn't go around with him as his friends. We worked for him. So we saw him at work or at rehearsals. So I don't know what he did in between, nor did I care. You know, mm -hmm. I just doing what I was supposed to do, and we were. Do you guys really understand how powerful that is? Once Elvis was done performing, sometimes he would sing gospel with his team. That is so telling of the person Elvis was. Do y'all understand how big of a superstar that he was? He did not have to do that, but that's who he was at his core. The Sweet Inspirations. television and um, had interview situations I've never asked you about Elvis what you want to know <laughs> when did that all start when did the whole <laughs> love for Elvis began he teases me about Elvis all the time <laughs> but and never says, on the air never. no well, he says like <laughs> if Elvis was alive now oh, I said no. man you wouldn't even hang out with Elvis <laughs> I said yes I wish it man Elvis would be in the lobby of your house like so you man's it there <laughs> And I'll be in the room. Tell him I'm out of here. <laughs> hey, what's going on, man? He told me to come over. <laughs> oh, I know what's going on. All right. But I, when I was a kid, see Elvis Presley to me. I just—it's it's his presence. I think it is. I don't mm -hmm. think anyone in this business has had as much presence as Elvis. I don't think anyone's had as strong a presence. I think I think there have been entertain. I think Michael Jackson is the only entertainer who's ever been more famous than him. But I think Elvis has. Uh, more present, like when Elvis walked in the room, everybody just looked at Elvis, you know? When he's on the screen, you looked at Elvis. You just had this thing about him. And he was going through all this stuff with drugs and all this craziness, but on screen and on stage, he always looked like he was in control, you know? And that's amazing, because it was this wall going on inside this guy. And I'm just fascinated. You know, um, because... Wow, shout out to Eddie Murphy. Now, that was deep. He said a lot in just a little bit of time. 
with that being said, I've heard so many people say that Elvis had this thing where he demanded attention and he didn't even have to do much. All he had to do is walk in a room and everybody wanted to know more. Everybody wanted to look at him. And that is insane to me. I've only heard a few people describe in that way. And y'all let me know if you ever got the opportunity to go to his concert or go to a show or really just be in the same room with Elvis, did he have that special thing where people just naturally gravitated towards him? Now, Eddie Murphy also just said that Michael Jackson was more famous than Elvis. Now, if you ask me, I think that Michael Jackson and Elvis is a fair comparison because both of them were superstars. But Eddie Murphy said that Michael Jackson was more famous than Elvis, but Elvis had this thing over Michael. I don't know. Which one did you think was more famous, Michael or Elvis? Or did you think both were in their own lane and they were both famous in their own right? I don't know. Um, the black community obviously felt that we shouldn't be doing it. So Ebony Magazine, in fact, called us and uh, wanted to know, we got a lot. Why are you singing with Elvis Presley? You know, why not? <laughs> and then sometimes we get um, shot back with, well, you know what he said about black people. Uh, yeah. Hmm. What did Elvis say about black people? Uh, yeah, I heard that story too. Um, but I also heard what he said about Mexican people. It's the same story. <laughs> what, what he said he about, say about black people? Uh, uh, the story is Elvis Presley said, all a black person, I'm using that, can do for me is shine my shoes. Hmm. I'm going to sit up a little bit for this one. So, is that true? Because I'm just now getting into Elvis, and I've never heard that statement myself. I personally, I don't like it. Now, I'm not going to judge too fast, because one thing about it, we're all human. Nobody is perfect. And we all have said stupid things at some point in time. I don't know. Those are just my opinions. Now, you guys let me know your opinions on this matter below. But Mexicans have the story. All a Mexican can do for me is sign my shoes. That's also attributed to Elvis. Yeah, that's a story. That's a rumor made up by some rock and roll singer who wanted to be where Elvis was, I suppose. Because as far as I'm concerned, Elvis treated us royally. And if he said it, I don't care, because there's the things that I've said I don't want anybody repeating. <laughs> I'm going to be an Elvis in person. Exactly. And that is my point. We all have said and done things. None of us are perfect. Obviously, you see the irony here. You've got a black man imitating a white man who sounded like a black man. I respect Elvis for what he did for music. You know, he opened a lot of doors for a lot of folks back there during a the time when they wouldn't even, quote unquote, play the music on radio. So uh, this is a tribute to Elvis. At first, yes. Yeah, well, a lot I mean, of said he was did. playing black music. He's a white guy. Yeah, but see, at first music. he was playing more like rockabilly. He wasn't yeah. really getting into the things that he started to do later. But when he started to do that, then he started to turn heads, including mine. Yeah, it did? So yes. So what did you see then? I saw became... that he was, he had everything. The looks, he had the, the talent. He had the he had rhythm, everything. Had the rhythm, he had the soul. Every, had everything. To me, he had everything. You know, you start looking at the guys, God almighty, he's handsome, he's tall, and <laughs> he looks good, he can sing, he can play. He got a, you a know, lot of he, women. Well, I, I didn't see, uh, you know, I didn't see women disliking him, but he, he was just, I didn't, and I didn't see him after them yeah. either. But uh, I guess had I been handsome like that, I probably would have. Well, there you have it. Elvis even had the men blushing. He said Elvis had it all. Looks, talent, charisma. Do y'all agree? Black cats. 
keep away from me. Take my advice, go shinny up a tree. I've got a hard luck, and the hardest kind of luck you'll find. I ain't lying. I've got the bluest kind of blue. During the 60s and early 70s, when tensions between blacks and whites were at an all-time high, Elvis demonstrated his desire for racial reconciliation in the musicians that he chose and the treatment they received. He uh, believed that he had a certain connection with God, not so much more than anybody else did, but in his search, he was trying to get close to God. So he felt that by helping others, maybe that was his mission. It's different than other kids I grew up with. I'd hang around parts of Tupelo my folks never even knew about. If Mama had known where I was half the time, I would have called help for it. Wow, Tupelo, Mississippi. Do I have any watchers from Mississippi? And if so, do they honor Elvis in a big way in his hometown? I would think they would. I don't imagine it being a lot of people from Tupelo, Mississippi, as big as Elvis. So you guys let me know. A friend of mine used to take me across town to an area called Shake Rag. And that was when I first heard the blues. Sure this is the house that Elvis bought for me. He bought it in 1974. He bought her a whole house? What? Who? He really was super generous. Not only did he buy random people Cadillacs, as y'all told me in the comments, but he bought houses too? Listen, I think we all want a friend like Elvis. And he came and picked the house out for me. And I liked it, and he liked it. So he said, well, Mary, this is your house, if you like it. I told him I loved it. It was really nice. There must be lights burning brighter somewhere. Got to be birds flying higher in a sky more blue. If I can dream of a better land Where all my brothers walk hand in hand Tell me why, oh why, oh why Can't my dream come true? All right, and there you have it. That was Elvis in the Black Community, part two. I honestly don't know if I enjoyed part one or part two better. Both of them were amazing because I learned a lot of great nuggets about Elvis and his influence on not only black culture, but culture, period. It is crazy to see the influence that Elvis had on so many of our favorite musicians and actors today. Like he really influenced generations. Honestly, the biggest takeaway from me is knowing that Elvis was able to achieve such great success by being himself and staying true to who he was at the core. The little boy that was raised in the ghetto, and he really was a representation for so many because of that. And he did not take that for granted, obviously. He used his platform for the better good. Not only did he help people financially, but he helped people dream. And again, using Elvis for an example, you don't have to have it all together. You don't have to come from a lot. All you have to do is stay true to yourself and work hard and be a good person. And you never know what you can achieve. His story is so inspiring. 